Welcome to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I'm going to be talking about hair and makeup, which has been a topic of much conversation. <laughs> if you're enjoying these, please do like and subscribe, share them with anyone you think will enjoy. If you'd like to know when I'm going to post more videos, hit that notification bell. In terms of hair, the initial thing was during the homecoming, because Earl Hamner referred to his family as redheads based on his father's red hair, they wanted all of the children to have red hair. Richard Thomas did not have red hair. I did not have red hair, nor did David Harper, who played Jim Bob. So for the three of us, when they shot The Homecoming, they actually colored our hair. My hair was dyed a sort of an auburn color for that, um, for that TV movie. Then after that, after we shot The Homecoming, um, I pretty much just uh, let my hair start growing out. And, and I think they did like dye my hair back to my own color, but that's really hard to do. So my hair was like kind of growing out. And by the time the first season started, I had, I don't know, about three, four inches of, of roots that didn't match. So what happened was for the first season, uh, they would, it was my own hair color at the roots, and then they would have me put a rinse on uh, that sort of matched my own hair color. So I would try to hit from the point of the roots growing out uh, down that would more or less match my my own color. And we did that until the hair grew out enough and faded enough that it was pretty much uh, not noticeable as a difference in hair color. So that was the aspect relative to hair color. Uh, then, of course, it was 1971 when we did The Homecoming and 1972 when we started the series. For the boys, long hair was in. So they did cut all of their hair for The Homecoming. And they did ask me uh, about my willingness to have my hair cut, kind of almost like a bowl cut for The Homecoming. And uh, my agent on my behalf uh, and uh, for my... Me too said no, and I was happy about that because I was rather attached to my long hair. As we got into the series, uh, I know the boys all did have fairly short hair, certainly not 70s hair. Whether it was always as short as it might have been in the 30s, I have no idea. I'm, I'm not familiar enough with, um, with men's haircuts of that time period. And of course, we were in a rural area, so haircuts would have been homemade. You know, grandma, mama would have cut hair. You did occasionally see grandma, I think, cutting John Boy's hair one time. Uh, as for the girls, we pretty much just wore our hair down uh, early on. In about the third season, I thought, well, Mary Ellen was now about 16 and thought it might be a time when she would start wearing a bun. Michael had hair extensions uh, that they put in so that she had, when she had her bun to fill her hair out, Later, her hair went to a French twist, which meant that it was less, it was mostly Michael's hair. She has very thick hair naturally, but although it wasn't real long. So with her, it went from the extensions whenever her hair was down, it was braided, those were extensions. Her hair went from a little more red to a little more blonde and then went to sort of more in her own sort of natural length of hair and color. Uh, for Mary Ellen, yes, I went from the long hair then into uh, starting to wear a bun in the third season. And then uh, I kind of got tired of that personally and, and went, uh, went out of the full bun. Then and there were times where I had like the long hair, but then a partial bun. Uh, so I went through those. And then, of course, uh, the comment that ha we have heard most, which is uh, when we got to those sort of Farrah Fawcett uh, winged, uh, you know, layered cuts. And yes, I totally confess that that was so not period. And I honestly don't know why they got away with that. Um, maybe the, the hair department felt that it wasn't really their call to tell us that our hair wasn't period. Maybe the producers got lax. I'm not sure exactly why we got away with that. Uh, but it certainly wasn't period. And, um, I think, uh, you know, it was a haircut that I got on my own, so I didn't consult with anybody about getting that haircut. And, you know, they certainly could have put other hair pieces on and given me a more period look. And I'm, I'm not sure why that didn't happen. But you are absolutely right that we were not correct for those 40s 
uh, what would have been accurate for the 40s hair. As for makeup, uh, early on for most of us, it was pretty much what they called um, pancake. So it was um, it was uh, Max Factor. It was um, you. They would use a wet sponge and 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 get the makeup mixed with water, and then it would be put on. And I I swear it felt like you had chalk on you. Um, sometimes the boys didn't have to wear as much of it because their skin tones might have been. Uh, a little more tanned or whatever to begin with um, and but we pretty much just wore that so it was it was a base color to uh, so that the lights didn't wash us out too much um, so that that went on for a number of seasons and with the younger ones for a longer period of time because they didn't add extra makeup we were supposed to look like we weren't really wearing makeup so it was more just to not look too pale so the ones who were paler, you know, the, the coloring would would change for each person what worked to make their their skin tones look natural. Um, anytime hands or necks or, or arms or things were showing, if those were too pale and didn't match, then they would do that uh, on your arms. And, and it was, oh, it was so uncomfortable. I hated wearing, you know, the hand because it was on your hands and then you, you um, you couldn't go wash your hands easily, or you were trying to keep things off of your hands. Uh, so that was my pet peeve. Maybe other people it didn't bother as much. As we got a little bit older, then they switched from this pancake to what they called a pan stick, which was a really thick, um, kind of grease-based uh, paint that they or makeup that they used for the grown-ups and for us when we got a little bit older and when it needed more coverage. Makeup would be put on when you first arrived for whatever your first scene was, and then it would be on all day long until you were done filming for the day. So during the course of the day, again, being a teenager and having oily skin, um, when we would go to shoot a shot, there'd always be kind of a makeup check. And sometimes because there were so many of us makeup checks got missed and so sometimes you'll see that we're a little more shiny on camera but the makeup artist would try and come in and powder us down or touch up makeup so that it looked consistent overall so it just kept getting layered during the day you'd get powdered and then if you if it was if it needed to be filled in they'd add more makeup and then powder it then you'd go to lunch and you'd come back and you'd go back for makeup touch-ups and they'd put more on and they'd put more powder on so by the end of the day, you just had this stuff on. It was like your, your skin couldn't breathe and it took particular makeup remover to get it off. Uh, so, you know, when you kind of had this on for about 12 hours in a day, you know, it was no wonder our skin broke out. Uh, so that went on, you know, throughout the series pretty much uh, because at that period in time, I think maybe a little bit towards the end of the series, maybe the makeup got a little bit lighter uh, not quite so thick and maybe not quite so tough on the skin. The other thing I remember about my makeup was um, I was very fortunate to have very dark eyelashes and they were kind of long and curled a bit. So early on, they never put any kind of mascara or eyeliner or anything on me. Um, and the makeup artist would tell me that he would get notices from upstairs with the producers when they were watching dailies, watching the footage, they'd say, stop putting makeup on Judy. And he'd be like, I'm not putting makeup on Judy. You know, they thought that I had eye makeup on and, you know, it was just the way my eyes were and the way my lashes and stuff were that made it look like that. So um, I guess I was kind of fortunate. So early on in those early seasons, I am not wearing, you know, extra eye makeup. Later when, uh, you know, Mary Ellen was a little bit older, then they did put a, a little bit on, but it was always supposed to look like, you know, none of the women were particularly wearing makeup. That was, that was pertinent to the storyline. So we always tried to keep it pretty natural. With the boys, the men, uh, they pretty much just wore a, a foundation of makeup to neutralize the skin tones and make them, uh, not look washed out on camera because uh, the lights were very intense and they did kind of wash you out. Uh, so different types of film and lights required 
you know, different uh, shades of makeup and stuff like that. Uh, Ralph Waite, because he was younger, you know, when he started, he wanted to carry a bit more age, and so they would add a little gray to his sideburns and sometimes around, you know, the edges of his his hair, and that was just uh, um, a whitish gray um, makeup with um, a kind of a stipple uh, brush type thing that would be put then on and around there and anybody who needed that. They would do the same thing if they wanted to look, uh, one of the men to look like they were unshaven or, you know, had been up late, had a five o'clock shadow, whatever they, uh, similarly, but with a darker uh, color of makeup would sort of stipple it on to the beard line. And that's how they would create that. That's what I have for you for this segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons about the hair and makeup. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll see you for future episodes of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.